in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the glory is here. The glory is here. We are the revealers of the glory. Manifesting the glory. Go ahead and pray. Sapratike parantos, sapraka palagata paratos. Sapreke paratos, sapreke belega parutia. We arise and we shine, for our light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon us. Risen upon us. Risen upon our destinies. Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray father let your glory be made manifest through my life go ahead and pray let your glory in this season where you are revealing your glory through men allowing that river to flow through men let my life be enlisted as one of those lives, those vessels through which your glory will flow. Someone make it a desperate prayer. Someone make it a desperate cry. Someone make it a desperate prayer, a desperate cry. That your glory will be revealed through my life. Your power will be made manifest through my life. No distractions, you are praying, you are crying from a heart that is desperate, a heart that is sincere. Someone pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The very powerful rendition by the worship team it's important not just to dance over songs, but to listen to what the songs are saying first. Most times, believers just dance. It doesn't matter what is being said. Once the melody is pleasant, and there is a place for that. But don't forget that songs are also sermons. They are not just singing. They are speaking to your spirit. It's important to follow the words, follow the thought line, then receive it into your spirit then you rejoice over it. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh we worship. That's just a song in my spirit. Hallelujah. Yahweh we worship. You know the song? Yahweh.
Father, we are gathered tonight again because we love you, because we trust you, because every encounter with you is a life, destiny defining encounter. And we pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit will find unrestrained access to our minds, our destinies, change what needs to be changed, remove what needs to be removed, bring in what needs to be brought in, in the name of Jesus, that at the end of tonight's service will be mightily imparted to the glory of your name. You believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Please be seated. Welcome to church. This is Koinonia. Blessings to all who are following us across the globe. It's always an honor to have you join, to have you connect. Um, we are a very minute fraction as far as those who are listening to this teaching is concerned. Um, those following online are by far, they outnumber the people in this place together. And so it's important we let you know that we appreciate you. We're one big family learning together, growing together. And tonight the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Invite everyone around you for those connecting online. It's time to learn the word of God. That means it's also time to receive of his grace. It's time to be enlightened. It's time to be imparted by the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Reverend Akila, always an honor having you. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And all who have traveled from outside this city, we appreciate you. We're a house of honor, and this is not a ritual. We believe in people, we love people, we invest honor in people. It is one thing to be called, it's one thing to be anointed, but when God positions a people to believe in you and to invest their time, their participation, their loyalty, it's important to recognize and to appreciate and so we do not take lightly all those who have come, particularly our first timers. I know that you were generously celebrated, but please allow me to appreciate all our first timers one more time. Let's give them a big God bless you. Give them a big God bless you. If you find yourself here, you were brought by God. Truly, no one comes on his own. It will look like you came on your own or you came in honor to an invitation. But the way God designed this house, um, it's always a solemn assembly. If you find yourself here, you were called by God. And tonight may it be for you a feast of fat things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me start tonight by, I was stirred in my heart while praying for tonight's meeting to do a quick recap from the teaching that we had last year, this is the message. It was strongly impressed upon my spirit to remind us again that every teaching that comes from this altar, every teaching that comes from this ministry is intended to address very specific areas of our lives. And um, it's very important that we understand this. The the um, encounters that we have in this place is beyond the journey to being spiritual. It affects every aspect of our lives. And please allow me for a minute or two to remind you that we have about seven levels of teachings that come from this altar. Number one is called the message of salvation. That means among the many teachings you would hear in this place are teachings that are designed to get the unsaved saved or to give you intelligence as to the dynamics of salvation and the dynamics of redemption. No believer, no believer should be at a loss as to the entire dynamics of salvation. So the message of salvation is beyond just the preaching of the gospel to get an unsaved person to be saved. It also educates the believer to really appreciate what happened to you and to equip you with the knowledge to be able to administer salvation to another person. I personally believe that it is embarrassing if any believer has been 
in part of a flourishing word-based ministry for at least a year and cannot articulate um, himself or herself as touching the matters of salvation. You should be able to defend your faith. What happened to you or what happens to a man when you get saved? Are we together? There's no one who has been seated under this grace for at least a year or two who should not at least be able to attempt a teaching or a discussion relating to salvation. So if I ask you, what does it mean for someone to be saved? What does it mean to encounter Jesus as Savior? I would be embarrassed quite honestly if you just say, well, I don't know. Go and ask some, one of the leaders. No. You see, remember that the teaching ministry seeks to build, not impress. Seeks to build. Your lecturer does not come to impress you. Your lecturer comes to bring before you a body of knowledge that makes you become a doctor, an architect, or an engineer. Are we together? And so when I remind you of these things, it is my duty. This is a school. You are supposed to learn and you should be so furnished with knowledge. Not just shouting amen, not just falling under the anointing. You should be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge. So anyone at all, you don't have to be a leader. That you have been under this grace, you should be able to explain the matters of salvation with intelligence. That a man comes to Jesus by the convicting power of the Spirit of God and that verbalizing his lordship, believing that he's savior over your life and destiny, receiving that life into your heart, are we together? By faith. Then you receive the gifts that come with salvation. And I've taught you that there are three of them. Number one is the forgiveness of sin. Never forget this. When you get saved, when you come to Jesus at salvation, the first gift you receive is the forgiveness of sin. The second gift you receive is righteousness through faith. The nature of righteousness. The third gift you receive is eternal life. So you don't just receive life. The emphasis is usually on eternal life, the Zoe life. But it starts with the forgiveness of sin. If your sins are not forgiven, you cannot be declared righteous. And if you are not declared righteous, you cannot receive his life. So it starts with the forgiveness of sin. This is a theological progression of salvation. Forgiveness of sin, righteousness by faith, and then the life of God. Are we learning now? Very, very important. So that you can know who is saved and who is not saved. Number two, the message of transformation. The second kind of message that comes upon this altar is the message of transformation. I have taught you that when a believer comes to the faith, just because that person is a believer does not mean the person can um, manifest the riches of the life he or she has now received. That eternal life, the riches that are embedded in this Zoe life, they are released at the instance of knowledge. That means if you lack knowledge, you can be saved, and yet your experience will be the same as that of an unsaved person. Your authority will not manifest. Your decisions will not be superior. The supernatural life you have received will not be made manifest whatsoever. Because manifesting eternal life is knowledge dependent. And once the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your spirit at salvation, his next project is your mind. Your mind, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul, the renewal of your mind. And it is a very prolonged project because not every information in your mind is dangerous. So he cannot delete everything. It is going to be a careful work of many years of editing wrong information. And the reason why it is very difficult is because it depends on your yieldedness, not just his power. Are we together? For salvation, you did not participate in the actual process that led to that salvation. Yours is only to release your faith and receive it. But transformation, it is you and the Holy Spirit through the word. This is why it is difficult. It means you can say, I am tired. Holy Spirit, this one month journey is enough for me like that. And he will have to respect you and make do 
with the level of renewal you have available. And so it will look like his power is very limited in your life, but it is because your lack of transformation will not allow much of him to find expression. Are we together? Yes. This is what distinguishes two believers, one saved, one saved, genuinely saved, but their possibilities can be east and west because of the space through transformation and renewal that they have given the Holy Spirit. So every message is my partnership with the Holy Spirit in that attempt to widen that gap again as far as transformation is concerned. Are we together? That you will be better transformed this week than you were last week. That means the power of God can flow better through your life this week than it was last week. That means you can experience the riches of eternal life in a more potent way this week than it was last week. It takes a long time because we have loyalty even to error. It is a human thing to be emotionally connected to anything that has been around you for a long time, even if it's a lie. Are we together? And so releasing that lie, leaving the, the certain in quote for the uncertain is usually very difficult. Your entire life has been built around that philosophy. And when the Holy Spirit now comes through these teachings in their variety to deconstruct that faulty mindset, most times it is met with fierce rebellion. Even though you know that the Holy Spirit intends good for you, but to now give up this mindset, it's a journey that most people cannot even stand. And this is the reason why believers do not manifest the glory of God in experience over extended periods of time because transformation is predicated upon trusting the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I am living a superior information for a higher one. I have all my life, I have, my life has revolved around this information. Now the word of God is telling you that information is wrong or limited or inferior. To now drop it and embrace something superior, it takes a lot. So the teachings come by the wisdom of the Spirit to give you a chance. It is the reason why they are repeated again and again in various forms, in various fashions, using various topics. The Holy Spirit is after your mind, after your mindset, after your belief system, hoping that you will give him a chance through the word to transform you. Number three, the message of empowerment. The believer is a good Christian, but may not be an effective witness. It takes beyond transformation to be an effective witness. You want to be an ambassador. You want to represent and defend the purposes of the kingdom. You will need more than transformation. You will need empowerment. And so there are teachings that come once and again from this altar targeted at empowering us empowering us spiritually showing us the keys that help men to have power with god hallelujah number four the message of the supernatural we are not just called to serve god we are not just called to represent him we are called to manifest and validate the victory that is in Christ. We are not just called to tell the story. We are not just called to initiate people into that, into that experience. We are being called by God to manifest the supernatural. Signs and wonders, miracles, breakthroughs, and then a life of victory. Acts 4.33 says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all, upon them all, not upon the ministers in their midst, not upon the worship people in their midst, upon them all. The message of the supernatural. That means you would find through our teachings messages that help you not just to access power, but the dynamics, the working dynamics of that power so that you can experience victory, testimonies. Number five, the message of purpose. Upon this altar and through this ministry and through this apostleship, you will receive messages that build your life and build your consciousness as far 
as the matters of purpose and kingdom advance is concerned. Everybody has a purpose in Christ. Everybody has a destiny. Everybody should be part of kingdom advance and societal transformation. I have taught you here that the Great Commission captures salvation for sinners, transformation for the saints, and then transformation for territories. God has called us to be witnesses, to be agents of change. Hallelujah. And so messages that deal with value, messages that deal with um, relationships, messages that deal with destiny, you would still find them upon this altar building us not just to be spiritual as it were, but also to be people who are purpose driven. Are you learning already? Number six, the sixth kind of message you hear from this altar and through this apostleship is the message of unity and love. There is a unique investment of the Holy Spirit upon our lives to help bring believers, particularly the body of Christ, to attain a higher state of love and unity than we have attained so far. You would see this expressed in our attempt to bring balance to imbalances. You will see this expressed in our attempt to mend divides and to help galvanize misunderstandings. It is a mandate that God has given to foster unity and to foster love. It is very, very important, the message of love, the unity of faith, that we are always stronger together, better together, more effective together. Hallelujah. The seventh and final message you will hear from this altar is the message of lasting peace and fulfillment. Very important. Lasting peace and fulfillment. So in addition to spirituality, transformation, empowerment, purpose, unity, it is important to know that God is interested in your finding peace, lasting peace. God is interested in your finding fulfillment. This is where we cover teachings that deal with human relations principles, leadership, prosperity, success, fulfillment, and then your eternal destiny, helping you to live a meaningful life. Messages like what seekest thou, messages like the law of seasons, messages like lessons from an overcomer. All of these messages have been tailor-made by the wisdom of the Spirit to help us find lasting peace and fulfillment. Are we learning now? The reason why I'm saying this is because I owe you that responsibility, but this is also in a way mentorship. Don't build people haphazardly. It's important the people understand the sequence. It is impossible to hear any message on this altar that does not address one or more or all this in their various, their varieties. What is this telling you? So that you will trust what you are hearing. That is not only the anointing that is responsible for what you are hearing. Vision is also involved in what you are hearing. That you are becoming something exact. Are we together? The messages that come here are not trial and error. Uh, what do you think they should hear today? You've not heard about giving and vow. Oh yeah? Turn to Genesis chapter 8. You know, and all of that. No. Leadership does not work that way. You don't build people haphazardly. I'm saying this so that you can, you have a right to cross-check your growth against these indices. And if the curriculum is not covered, then you should not be here because it means I'm wasting your time. Are we learning now? So that if they ask you, why do you come for koinonia? You don't just say, I like apostle. Or you don't just say, I, it's God that asked me to come. Yes, God asked you to come. But you can defend your understanding that in my coming, I have been taught along the lines of salvation, transformation, empowerment, purpose, and destiny. Are we learning now? Yes. You see, when you speak like that, it is a wiser way to invite someone to church than to tell the person, come to my church. You don't know what you are missing. Sit down there and, and don't grow. All those sentiments, no. When you market products, you, the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. 
You are not afraid if the product actually works. Are we together? If the product does not work, you will have to patch it and do a lot of things and tell lies. But if the product works, you will have the confidence to say, I guarantee you, taste of this product. Hallelujah. It is my commitment to make sure that the teachings that come week in, week out cover these grounds and there is so much. You know, sometimes I wish we had service every day because based on what we have to cover versus the opportunity we have, there is so much. I know God has helped us to learn, but you believe me, there is still so much to learn. Some you have heard them, but you didn't get them. You are just aware. It has not entered your spirit because your result has not yet shown you have received it. So sometimes God will force me to repeat it again. It may not be new, but it's always fresh. Are we learning now? This is how you train people. So that at the end, when you step out as a witness, you will bring great glory to God and you will bring pride to us who have been used by God to mentor you. Because you will not disgrace both God and us. Are we together? As you speak, it will be clear that you've been greatly mentored. My life is confused. Somebody is meeting with you now. I don't know what to do with my life. In fact, I don't even know. I want to kill myself. You don't say, yeah, my brother, you are not the only one. All of us too want to kill us. No. If you speak like that, then you are not behaving like a mature child of God. You may be saved. You are not bringing validation to Jesus and then to this ministry. But you can help the brother to say, listen, my brother, I understand, but there can be a way out. Our destinies are framed by our understanding. What do you mean by that? No, my father is the reason why when his colleagues were learning, where was he? Well, he's made his mistake. But the gift of time is God's proof to you that he's still interested. Oh, wow, I'm listening. Is it making sense what I'm saying now? I'm acting all this drama so that you understand what I'm saying. You're discussing with the person. Yes, the Bible says this and that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You need to culture what you're saying. You're calling yourself names. You are programming realities. Words are not empty. Is that true? Yes. What do you mean words are not empty? Let's go to scripture. Don't say, I think. Don't say, I know. The basis of the believer's proposition is the written word. So if you are talking to someone and say, my brother, they taught me. Just, are you going to listen? Or mm -mm, Go to the scripture. If you don't know what is written, you will only be speaking head knowledge. You see, the moment you go to the Bible, you stop trying to defend anything. Because you are announcing what is written. When you don't bring it is written, you will have to go through the labor of defending and you will transfer the pain to a pastor or a church and trouble will come from there. But when you take people to scripture, it's the final bus stop. Any disagreement they have will be between the Bible and God. Are you learning now? Imagine, imagine, imagine that with what you know so far, you can literally look at someone and with intelligence, spiritual intelligence, know what is wrong with the person. Why does everybody hate me in this office? It's as if I'm not a Christian and you can see the gaps. I have told you when doors close, let's write a short exam. Every time doors close, what is responsible? Hmm. Half, 50%. You didn't answer the question well. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. One more time. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. So you can know immediately, why are they fighting this man? Yes, there may be an undertone of witchcraft and all of that, but they prey upon his dishonor. Deliverance is not the only thing that man needs. Because even if he's delivered, his bad attitude of dishonor towards his superior, he has not learned how to speak well. He said something bad and the boss had it. The boss is now dealing with him. What is the key? You see that now? You teach the man that this is the world of men and all blessings come from God through men. You see that that person is being delivered already. Next Sunday, they call you a pastor. Immediately, the Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God. When they are confused, they know who to run to. 
you are already scaling your influence in that organization. Because they now you have become a reference. Every time they are confused, every time they are making blind arguments, without any title, they come to you. The Bible says you shall be a repairer of the breach. It is part of your destiny. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, I want to be an exceptional witness. Go ahead and pray. I desire to be an exceptional witness, not just a church goer, not just a professing Christian. I desire to be a, an effective, exceptional witness furnished by light, furnished by spiritual intelligence. Go ahead and pray. You're not wasting your time. Access to light. Taking away the haziness from my Christian experience. That I am a victorious believer and I can defend the faith with intelligence, with power. Living an inspiring and a meaningful Christian adventure. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I hope this blessed you. Yes. This is the correct way to invite people to church. Don't just tell them, come. Why should I come? I'm busy. I can tell you this. ABC is what to expect. So you are not just inviting them for instance. Their hearts are also prepared. They have an idea of what to receive. For the unsaved person, there is a package for you. For the person in need of transformation, there is a package for you designed by God. Are we together? For the person who is empowered, maybe a man of God, you are not necessarily ignorant, but yours is the grace and the empowerment to defend the truth you know. That is what you came for. There is also a package for you. That way you prepare your heart. When an impartation comes, for instance, if in the middle of my teaching, the Holy Spirit now begins to move me to release an anointing, you know he's doing it because of you. And you can receive. Hallelujah. Let's get to tonight's teaching. This is one of the side effects of passion. I can take on this appetizer and flog it out till, till it's night. It's good to eat well, even biologically. When you eat well, you, are, you stay well, you are, you are healthy and you are happy. Is that not true? Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I'm teaching on the manifold grace of God. It's a very powerful teaching. The manifold grace of God. We want to contend tonight for greater exploits, greater witness as believers. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. I want to show you something very powerful about the grace of God and why an individual can be limited as far as your exploits in destiny and in the spirit is concerned and others can make great progress in the spirit. By this teaching tonight, I'm praying that the grace and the anointing, the dimension of the spirit that is missing in your life, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that whilst you are listening, that grace from heaven will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the manifold grace of God. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Spirit of the living God, help us tonight in Jesus' name. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. It's your grace your grace I'm nothing without you grace your grace shines on me first Peter 4 10 let's read together first Peter 4 10 media are we ready let's go every man had received as every man had received the gift uh-huh even so minister the same 
one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Very clearly here we see from scripture that the grace of God is multidimensional. And I'll define grace for you shortly, but just for you to know that the grace of God is multidimensional. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, the God of all grace, not the God of grace, the God of all grace, a summation of every dimension of grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ, after ye have suffered a while, by those graces together, make you perfect, make you established, strengthen you, and settle you. But these four possibilities, perfection, establishment, strengthening, settlement, rest roundabout, is a product of all grace. Not just one dimension of grace. Are we learning now? Very important. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Is someone learning already? Is able to make all grace, not some grace, not a dimension, a department. All grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. So it takes the manifestation of all grace to abound in every good work. Can I give you one more scripture? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7. Grace is manifold. Grace is multidimensional. Let's read together. One to read. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. See that you abound in this grace also. In addition to the ones that you have, there are still some that are missing in your life. There are still some that are missing in your ministry. There are still some that are missing in your Christian experience. You are not bankrupt of grace, but there is not yet completion. So in addition to these other dimensions you have received, press, contend, don't settle. See that you abound in this grace also. See that you abound in this grace also. Grace is multidimensional. What is grace? Let me define for you what grace is. Grace in simple terms is supernatural empowerment. Supernatural empowerment. Supernatural empowerment. Every time we talk about grace or the grace of God, in very simple terms, we're talking about a supernatural empowerment enablement by the Spirit of God that helps you function in the God class that helps you manifest all the realities that are in the Christ are we learning already so when we talk about grace we're talking about divine or supernatural empowerment we're talking about divine or supernatural endowment it's a it's a it's a manifestation of the power of the Spirit upon a believer it empowers you to be it empowers you to do are we learning now now theologically speaking their grace is broadly in two categories there are two major categories of grace number one is called saving grace you may want to write that down for your knowledge Number one, we're dealing with manifold grace, but let me just give you a theological background that from a theological standpoint, the grace of God is expressed in two major dimensions. Number one is called the saving grace. The saving grace. This is very powerful. 
the saving grace. Is someone learning? Yes. The saving grace. This is the grace that is released upon an unbeliever that makes that believer to believe the gospel. Listen carefully. That believes the gospel is the empowerment that comes upon an unbeliever granting that unbeliever access to even believe the gospel and to receive Jesus. Without this saving grace, no matter how powerful a sermon it is, you will, it will not make any sense. Isn't it amazing? I was thinking through my notes and I was thinking of the many evangelists that have walked upon the earth and the many crusades that have happened. Some have brought great harvest. Some have not brought as much harvest. And I'm wondering what is the difference? I had to investigate Peter's sermon, the first recorded sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I would not preach that kind of message. It didn't sound very coherent and coordinated, yet in the midst of it, 3,000 people came in one meeting. That means it was beyond the words. It was beyond the sermon. Are we together? There was a grace by the Spirit that was released upon the hearers. I'm saying this up front so that as you minister the word, as you teach, as you preach, especially to unbelievers, do not think it is just by the persuasion of your speech that they will come to Jesus. In fact, to be honest with you, there have been many crusades with mighty miracles, genuine miracles that happen. And yet at the end of all those miracles, when an altar call is made, the number of people who come out relative to the signs and wonders, you would think because of those signs and wonders, people should flock to Jesus. But sometimes it's not like that. I've studied Billy Graham, for instance, and um, there were not many, in fact, I don't know any spectacular recorded miracles as we know, wheelchairs, you know, and so on and so forth. And you would see people sit down sometimes like they were dead as he was teaching. Very ordinary, very human, very simple, nothing charismatic, very intelligent, theological, philosophical. And when he was done, as he makes the altar call, you will literally know that there has to be a force that picks those people from their seats. It's called the saving grace. If you preach without the awareness that there is the saving grace released through your sermons, released through your examples, released through your altar call. You may speak so well and yet be disappointed. Everybody say saving grace. That is the grace that convicts. That is the grace that gives unbelievers an allowance to step forward, to come to Jesus at the point of salvation. I've had the honor of seeing that grace walk. I've seen it work. I know it works. That by the time you draw, you preach, and you draw people, sometimes you are tempted to say, did you understand what I just said? I'm not saying those who want to be healed. Amazing grace. Still remember? Now that's the part I don't like. Now we're not, we're not editing, you see. I know that those who wrote that song wrote it out of passion. They looked at their state without Jesus Christ. But as much as we hate how we were, I will not call myself a wretch. No. I will call my, myself what Jesus called me. Even when I was not saved, he didn't call me a wretch. He called me a harvest. I will choose to stay by his description. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that song, but for me, I have a right to edit it to suit my transformation. Are we learning? Thanks given to all. In fact, I prefer grace, grace, God's grace. Help me. The 
saving grace. The saving grace. Everyone here who is genuinely saved, I want you to know that that was the grace. Whether it was in your room, or it was here in Koinonia, or at a crusade ground, or some tracts were given to you, it didn't matter how you got saved. If at all you got to a point where you saw your sin and you saw the need for a savior, I'm telling you that between your former state and your now being a believer, that was the grace that was released. Everyone say saving grace. The next time you are preaching to someone, whether it's to one person or to a crowd of people, have it at the back of your mind that whilst I'm speaking through the frailty of my communication, the limitations of my example, the simplicity of my presentation, that there is a grace that goes beyond what I'm saying. You believe that? So that you know that you are not alone whilst you are preaching, whilst you are speaking, there is the saving grace. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. How many men? All men. The grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. The second dimension of that grace, and this is where I want to dwell tonight for a discussion, is called the enabling grace. The enabling grace. The enabling grace. The first has to do with all men, believers or unbelievers, all together. Anyone at all who comes to Jesus is a beneficiary of that grace. But the second dimension of this grace is called the enabling grace. And I want you to listen very carefully. If you're a man of God here, I want you to listen. I want to show you a very powerful key to really rising in power, power that shows. Hallelujah. Enabling grace. This is the supernatural empowerment of the spirit. Supernatural empowerment of the spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Paul, what he called his thorn in the flesh. And he said unto me, this was the response of God to his issue. My grace is sufficient for thee. It says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may rest upon me. One more scripture, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. The enabling grace. The enabling grace. I can do all things. I think I've said it here. It's a very, very arrogant statement. If that statement is not completed. Do you know how many things are there to be done on earth? How does a man stand and speaks to a church. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi. And then he says, I can do all things. I understand God can do all things. But you stand as a man and say, I can do all things. But then he says, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. No wonder scripture says, by you I can run through a troop. It says, by my God, I can leap over a wall. That means there are things that alone should not be done by ordinary men. But when this enabling grace comes upon you, and I'm praying for someone already in the name of Jesus, that the things you could not do, needed for your destiny, needed for the revelation of Jesus, the requisite grace for the next level, may it come upon you. The requisite grace for the next level, may it come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. Powerful scripture. 3 and verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. It says, but our sufficiency, our ability to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing, that when you see ordinary men producing extraordinary results, Paul here is defending the supernatural in men. 
He's saying we are not sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, of God, of God. Our sufficiency is of God. There is something we outsource from God that is responsible for the extraordinary results. Are we together? There's an enablement, an empowerment outsourced from God. Your life will command the extraordinary. Your life will command the extraordinary. I say it again to a believer. Your life will command the extraordinary. That men will look at you and say, as a man of God, you are an ordinary man. Why are these kinds of results being produced? And you will tell them, there is an enabling grace. It comes by the Spirit upon ordinary men. But when it does come upon that ordinary man, you cease to be ordinary. Cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. Now, please look up. The way God structured the kingdom, the way God structured the kingdom is such that for every result and every aspect of human living, every result you desire and every aspect of human living, listen please, the power of God or what you call the grace of God is the factor responsible for results but it is not generic in its operation this is something you need to learn the grace of God is not generic that means you can you can receive a grace but that grace you have does not speak to every area of your life are we together now it is the reason why it is called manifold you can receive the grace for favor for instance you will prosper financially, but you will be surprised that no sick body will be healed from you because the grace for favor will not automatically heal the sick, yet it is grace. An architect will not be given a surgical knife and allowed to go to the theater, even though that person is a degree holder or a master's holder or even a PhD holder, a professor in architecture will not automatically be granted access to a hospital. Are we together? Just because he's a professor, there is a department, there is a body of knowledge, and there is an area where his specialty works in. This is how grace is. So most believers do not know that grace is manifold. So they find themselves pressing along one dimension, and because the Bible says everyone who seeks finds, they will find grace in an area and excel in that area. But because other areas are bankrupt of grace, it says abound in this grace also. You find all kinds of lopsidedness in our Christian experience. For instance, you can receive the teaching grace, but the grace for performance is not there. And two of them were supposed to go hand in hand to make your witness powerful but you received an aspect of it so your teaching is sound theologically excellent articulate true doctrinally balanced but at the end of it because the grace for performance is not there you keep shouting amen and at the end there are no testimonies are we together now someone can receive a grace for signs and wonders and because he did not receive the teaching grace, his administration of God's power looks like charm or herbal medicine because there is no word base to give people an understanding. There is no frame. Are we together now? So you cannot deny the manifestation of power, but there is no growth. There is no understanding. Those who are receiving are still in doubt because the individual does not have the grace I hope you know that it takes grace to find the scripture that explains what God is doing. If you think finding scripture is an issue of intellect, try it. Buy a Bible and find it. No. It is the Holy Spirit that connects truths to truths. That sometimes beyond your scope of learning, you can meditate all you can. But if that grace for revelation is not there, you will not know the kind of scripture to combine because faith is built and anything that is built requires intelligence. Are we together? If faith is built in people, 
you need to know the right scriptures that create convictions at which meeting. So you can say something that is true, but faith is not built in the people. Because the grace that helps you to combine those truths to create power and persuasion and release faith in the people is not there. If you are learning, say amen. So, there are several aspects of our lives. Leadership, ministry, the supernatural, family, parenting, every major aspect of human life. Let me tell you the truth. Once there is an opportunity to represent the Christ there, there will be need for a grace. There is a grace, a dimension of this empowerment from the Spirit as a general rule, nobody can produce God's result to his satisfaction in the strength of the flesh. You will never be able to produce God's result, I repeat, to his satisfaction in the strength of the flesh. The challenge with many believers is because we do not know that the grace of God is manifold. Sometimes, because of the abundance of grace we enjoy in one area, it produces laxity and we cannot press for the other dimensions of grace that are missing in other areas. Are we together? And so you find lopsidedness in our Christian experience, excelling in one area but being utterly defeated in another area. I have seen people who have the grace for teaching for instance even have the grace for leadership but the grace called favor speaking across their lives and even finances is not there there are those who don't have the grace for relationships they are sincere people but nobody wants to be their friend yet there are others who are not the best of people yet if they enter a strange place give them one day they've made three friends not by lying they don't even know what is responsible for that attraction i'm telling you it's a grace if you carry that grace bar even if two of your hands are empty you will never return empty that grace speaks it causes people to behave to you in a certain way have you seen people like that so you will see somebody well dressed with your tie and suit and you see another person looking like you know somebody who is not responsible and two of them will go somewhere and you'll find the CEO co connecting with the other guy. So um, why are you looking shabby like this sir? I was just not in the mood to dress well. Oh I see it looks like you are a Yoruba person and the other person say look at me. Oh dear. If you look at the physical alone, you will be cheated in life a thousand times. I hope you are learning. The manifold grace of God. Now, when you see certain results happening in people consistently, consistently, it is because through the principles I'm going to be showing you, they have by mercy access this grace in the various areas as needed by their destinies it is your assignment to stay with the spirit of god listen and it is your assignment under a teaching grace like this my assignment is to show you the various aspects of your life that will be needed for destiny actualization so that in prayer now through knowledge you can cry for grace so if you find out for instance that god is calling you into ministry there are certain graces that should be present in your life the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace for leadership and administration are we together? The grace for influence. These are the manifold graces that if not there, you will see the direct consequence of not having that grace. Maybe this is explaining why a faithful Christian is not seeing results in other areas. Because for us, we are looking at grace as a generic thing. I have it. I fell down that other day. I received the grace called favor. It means I can organize a crusade. Where are the sick people? All of you come. Apostle laid hands on me. What came on you that day? This is the reason why we speak every time. Because it's not the same thing resting on you. Are we learning now? Yes. 
not the same thing resting on you. Do you think Isaac had never laid hands on his sons? Do you think Isaac never touched them? The question is, why didn't that blessing he was talking about, why didn't it flow? If it was just about contact. No. Paul, Peter calls himself a steward of the manifold grace. The manifold, the many-sided, the multi-dimensional. The saving grace is one. But the enabling grace is scattered into various aspects of your life. The aspects of your life that are needed for life and godliness. Each and every one of them is grace dependent. Empowerment dependent. And all of them function differently. Please look up. The way the grace for healing works is that it works with the hearing of faith and that's it. When the grace for healing is upon you, it is activated every time there is the hearing of faith. Are we together now? So once the word of God comes, you perceive faith to be healed in the people, you can release that grace. But the grace, say for prosperity and wealth, does not work that way. The grace for prosperity and wealth, number one, it works upon your mind. I've taught you this. It transforms your thinking. Then it enables you to be productive. Then it translates to divine direction. You see that now? So just because you understand the working dynamics of the healing grace does not mean you can prosper because their working dynamics are different. And then if you obtain, say for instance, the grace for influence. The grace for influence cannot work until you understand leadership and relationships. If you don't understand leadership and relationships, you can shout amen to the grace for influence. You can have it, but you will never be able to lead anybody. The grace for wisdom and revelation is enhanced by meditation. If you receive the grace for wisdom and revelation and you don't sit down with the word to meditate, that grace cannot be released. Are you seeing how they all work now? So just because you shouted amen and you received the grace, it's important to know what you received and to know how to activate it. The manifold grace of God. So there are many believers who have not received these graces or they have received it but they are not taught the dynamics. How the graces work. Today I can release upon you the grace for influence because I have taught you the dynamics. You know that influence is a combination of honor, relational principles, value. That grace can rest upon you and it is safe because there is an understanding that can activate it. When you carry that grace to an organization, in three months, you can become a leader there. Do you know why? Because you have what it takes to release the grace. The knowledge component to release that grace is there. If I go to a crusade ground, I don't need to be smart to heal. I don't need to be smart. All I need to carry is the genuine healing anointing. The grace for signs and wonders. And once there is an opportunity for faith to rise, either through worship or through the teaching of the word, once there is the hearing of faith, the power of God will be released there. And you will find people who are healed and tell you, I was doubting even as at the time. You see that now? But when you want to transform people, it needs intelligence on your own part. You who carries the spirit of wisdom, are we together? You must also pray for the grace and the gift of utterance. Utterance. The teaching ministry depends on utterance. If you don't have utterance, you can know the truth, but you may not know how to communicate it in a way that profits your hearers. If you're following me, say amen. amen. I have watched sometimes with pain in my heart as many people who do not understand the spiritual dynamics, they remain limited in ministry, limited in their faith adventure, limited in ministry, limited in their faith adventure. Why then do we go for knowledge? 
since it is grace that is really responsible for all the work, why don't we just receive grace? Why do we keep learning and going under the labor of transformation? Are we together now? If that grace component is really the secret, then apostle, why subject us through teachings and teachings? Why don't you just hold an impartation service? If you are tired, there are ministers here. Lay hands on them to lay hands on everybody and say, go and manifest. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. This is the major thing I want to teach you now. Because for many people, we are impartation conscious. That's why we keep falling and rising, shouting and rising, rolling and rising. And yet the results that follow that impartation is not at work in us. It's not like the impartation is a lie. But we have not learned the dynamics of activating this many-sided grace of God. Pray right now and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Shalika paruska brande belaku safraskiata. Open my eyes to see. It's a new season. It's time to produce genuine results in ministry. It's time to produce genuine results in my Christian adventure. Someone, go ahead and pray. Time to rise to a higher level of witness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Second Peter chapter one, please, from verse. 2 to 4. So number one, I said that the grace of God is his divine enablement and that there are broadly two dimensions to that grace, the saving grace and the enabling grace. And that the enabling grace is broken into various, various kinds and various levels that every possibility, every outcome in the kingdom is grace or empowerment dependent. Are we together? And that for every grace you receive, you must also understand the working dynamics, how that grace is released and how it operates. Now let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1, please, from verse 2. It says, grace and peace. Grace and peace. Look up, please be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. I want to show you very powerful principles right now and I want you to please pay attention. I will show you how to receive the manifold grace of God and I will also show you how to activate the workings of that grace. You will be very surprised that some of you, what you need is not more impartation. What you need is an orientation to know how to release the grace that you have received. That grace came upon your life five years ago. It's still resting there domiciled because you do not know how to activate it. And it will look like every miracle service or every impartation were a lie. Some of us even boast that truly I am a career of so, so, so and so grace. And you are not lying. But the results connected to that grace have refused to speak in your life because you do not know how to activate it. Are you ready to learn now? The first key, I want to show you the keys now. The first key that is responsible for accessing the grace of God, any dimension of his grace. And it is also the first key to activating any grace you have received. Please listen. Responsible for both receiving any dimension of grace, whether the healing anointing, whether the anointing for wealth and abundance, the anointing for leadership, the grace for territorial influence. It doesn't matter what variety and what dimension that grace is. The first key is that you must contend for high level spiritual illumination. High level spiritual illumination. 
The Bible says grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. The knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Knowledge. Everybody write that down. High level spiritual illumination. The more spiritually enlightened you are, the more the grace of God is attracted to your life, multiplied in your life, and activated in your life. Please listen. Listen. Listen carefully. Koinonia, look at me. You will write what? Let me have your attention. That means, show me two people in a meeting that I lay hands, for instance, on them, imparting the same grace. Are we together? Let's say the healing anointing. This man received that impartation, brother A. This man received the same impartation, brother B. Two of them. And I say, go. Go and be effective witnesses. You will be surprised that after five years, six years, one can have a flourishing global healing ministry, taking the healing power of Jesus to the nations. Are we together? Whereas the other person can be kept down, grounded, and may never, you will, it's only by photo or old videos, you will know that he was in that healing meeting. And you said, my brother, you were there too. Yes, sir. Hands were laid on you. I even fell down. And you ask, okay, so what happened with that anointing? I will tell you the difference. One went to war with that grace by contending for light. Are we together? He went and wrote down all the scriptures he could find in the Bible about healing. He read all the stories as, as he was priming his mind with light. He was giving more room for that grace to speak as well as multiplying that grace because in the stories, there are different variations of how Jesus healed. In the stories of healing, there were questions that were asked Jesus. Why couldn't this, well, you know, this demon leave? And he said, this kind goeth not. But by prayer and fasting, who seen that this man was born blind? Now, these are things that the anointing, the impartation will not teach you. It's in the place of study you will see those variations. Because when you stand on the crusade ground, it's not only headaches that will come. There are sicknesses that can be caused by stress. There are sicknesses that are caused by a broken spirit. It's not a demonic attack. The person is depressed and broken and is affecting their physical body. The approach is different. There are certain sicknesses that are a, a result of prolonged demonic activities. The demons did not intend to make the person sick. They've only stayed in the person for a long time. So they ministered death to the person. The sickness was a byproduct of their presence for a long time. Remember, Two of them have the healing anointing. But one will have an excelling healing ministry. And you are wondering, God, you are not being fair. How did you anoint this man so much? And when they ask that anointed man, who imparted upon you? He can say Joshua Selman. When they ask this, our brother, who imparted you? He will also say Joshua Selman. So what is the difference? Light. Light. Many of you have received impartations that have refused to multiply and are not being activated because the responsibility of contending for light, light along the area of impartation, not just every area. The grace you believe you have received, you contend for light that activates and multiplies that grace. If I impart the grace for favor upon you and you just go and study on healing, the grace for favor will remain small and will remain inactive because healing scripture is not the scripture that activates the grace for favor. Are we learning now? Most believers think an impartation is the end of everything. They do not know that that seed that has been sown in you, you should go back home and nurture it. Today, by the privilege of God's grace, and I say this with all humility, we are able to hold large meetings, global meetings across the globe today. I know where that grace came from. That grace came from Reinhard Bonke. I am a recipient of manifold graces. When you receive graces, it speaks. I was not the only one on that crusade ground by the grace of God. I know when it came. 
I would not dare to do the things I'm doing today. It's beyond having money. It's beyond having whatever I name. No. You cannot go across the globe. I saw Reinhard Bonke. He left the US, came to Africa. Every African nation packed stadiums, not just for the formality. And I said, no, there is a grace. If a frail man like this, beyond his speakings, when I stood at that crusade ground, I didn't go for entertainment. I knew what I desired. When it landed upon me, I went back to war upon it. I got the words of Jesus. I've studied every single crusade of Jesus in the Bible. I don't know how many times. Everybody say light. Don't fool yourself that just because you were under an anointed atmosphere, automatically that grace will speak. I'm showing you why impartations don't seem to work for many people in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You know how many videos of Reinhard Bonke, of T.L. Osborne, of Maurice Cerullo? I have rare videos. Some of them I bought it. Are we together now? And I sat down. There were times I was not watching it for entertainment. I was watching it for connection. A spirit connection. What did these people receive? And you are soaking in your spirit. You may not get it the first day. You will listen to that sermon. Ah, there is still something. One day, you will hear something only you will hear. That is the day something has rested on your life. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? You've heard my story. I didn't used to prophesy like this, oh, like to prophesy. I could speak over people, but to see and hear, no. It was in the night watching William Branham's message. I was looking and I said, look at this innocent man. People have accused him. People have said all kinds of things. Maybe the man made mistakes. So what? Not many people have his kind of compassion. I remember that night. It was not my first time watching it. And I just felt like it was like a cold sensation from my laptop. Literally, I see the hand came out, rested upon my head, and it started going down. Over a period of 30 minutes, I was shaking quietly there. I said, what is this that is happening to me? It was a new dimension. But it came at the point of hunger. It came at the point of study. Is someone learning? I desired the grace for favor. I was searching for careers of it because I knew that my life without that grace, the word of God is there, but graces are distributed through the ministry of men. When I found a man, Dr. Mike Mudok, you see that? I saw the wisdom of God at work in him. I saw the manifestations of favor from the testimonies upon his life. And I said, Lord, I believe you have deposited something upon the life of this man. There were many people who knew him. Others ate with him. Others walked in his ministry. That was not my business. I was desirous of that grace. For one month, I was praying over the grace for favor with scriptures. When it landed, every devil in hell knew that that grace had come. Are we learning? The first way you attract, multiply. Listen, you attract, multiply, and activate the manifold graces in their variety. Look, if you know what I'm teaching you, you will never go for any anointed meeting and return back and then your life does not change. You will not waste impartations again. And you will not need to go for a meeting twice to receive. Sometimes you may not have the opportunity to be under that grace twice. It may just be once. If I, if I missed out on that encounter with Reinhard Bonke, I never met him one-on-one, -on -one, but I remember that first day. I stood on that crusade ground. I saw mighty miracles. Honestly, you, you would almost think they were stage managed. What sort of a thing is this? My heart desired it, not for the loss of, I was already a man of God, seeing a bit of miracles there. But I knew that with my level of miracles, you can't go to the nations that way. You will embarrass yourself and the name of the Lord. 
living epistles. Here was a man who exemplified dimensions that were possible for anyone hungry and desperate. By the second day, I made up my mind that I would not just come and stand here. I wanted to serve. I remember, you've heard my story. I, I came early. I was looking for something to do. Was not interested in being a man of God or whatever. I saw them wheeling those who were, had wheelchairs. They were wheeling them somewhere and I pleaded. I said, please let me help and push the people there too. They said I was not trained. I wasn't part of the committee. I said, which committee? I traveled all the way with hunger. Committee, as I held the wheelchair and drove it forward, I was praying in tongues. I didn't even know who was seated there. Lord, this is how it will be in my own meetings too. The Bible says, and without all contradiction, it's not human worship. The less is blessed of the greater. I stood there. You've heard my story. For six hours, I was standing. There was a pregnant woman close to me. Occasionally, the woman would be tired, you know, pray and lean on me. You know, I was tired too. I wanted to say, Madam, what is all this one now again? But honestly, God sees my heart. My eyes were set like a flint. I was looking at this man as if nothing would distract me. In pain, hungry. But I stood with my heart open. I remember when he was done preaching. Very simple message. He was taking a cup of water. So that he would now minister the baptism and start healing. My hunger had reached the heavens. And that was when just it was. I did not even know I was in a vision. I'm telling you. I saw a bird. Giant bird. White silvery wings. It was, not, it was not flapping the wings. It was just going around the entire crusade ground. And I was watching that bird and saying, what is this going on? This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I was about to receive something. Something that would benefit my destiny, that would benefit my generation, that would bring glory to the name of the Lord. You see, Ba, don't disrespect people's sacrifices. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. As I'm speaking to you, I still remember this like yesterday. It was hovering round. I was lost in that crusade ground, even though I was in front. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters and that was where God told me the union between the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces a miracle do you know as I came back to myself I was back in the stage I didn't even know I had turned I rejoiced I said finally something had entered my spirit but I did not just go back saying oh yeah where are the sick people I would be disappointed because that impartation, as spectacular as it was, it was a seed. I went back to open the Bible. Light. Light. And he healed them all. Light. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 7. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Light. I was giving frame to that grace. He went about healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. I didn't see so much of deliverance in Renhabonke's crusade. The man whose crusades I saw mighty deliverance was T.L. Osborne. I saw dimensions of grace. I didn't see too many creative miracles, but I saw it in T.L. Osborne's meetings. Genuine miracles. Is someone learning? I knew that there was a grace that commands the attention of people he say, hear ye him anointing. I had seen that grace upon our father in the Lord, Daddy Gio. I had seen that grace 
upon our father in the Lord Bishop Oedeko no arguments no stupid talk if you don't have results keep quiet if you don't desire stay with God pursuit I remember when I returned from Canaan land I didn't just get up and jump no I opened the Bible ah that was when I found Mark chapter 1 and verse 37 and all the disciples came to him and they said all men seek for thee all men seek for thee all men seek for thee I saw a grace of influence upon dr. Miles Munro strange influence influence with governmental powers and not a, a man of God yet he was speaking at parliaments speaking to people and I knew that grace was needed in my life that was when I found Genesis chapter 7 and verse 16 17 and verse 6 and I will make you exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee let me tell you brothers and sisters every time you receive an impartation that is not the time to brag and post yourself falling down or post an anointed man laying hands on you posting does not activate the anointing go back and get relevant scriptures except you want to be a herbalist if it is by God and by the spirit go and sit down and get the word of God what is the basis for your carrying favor apostle laid hands on me no sir no sir I searched the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Now that I'd received this grace, the grace for wisdom came from many people. That, but that grace for favor, I saw it on Dr. Mudok. I desired it with all my heart. Profound man with strange testimonies of favor. Others did not appreciate it. Others trivialized it like they trivialized every sacrifice of everyone in the body. But I pressed for it. I didn't want to do ministry and be suffering around, especially financially. I didn't want to tell lies and manipulate people. And I knew there was a way. Is someone learning? This is very powerful. Manifold grace. No matter what grace you receive, I'm telling you now, if you contend for light, Sometimes my people come here to lead prayers and they share with you the various graces that are available in this house. Shouting amen is wonderful. Falling under the anointing is wonderful. But I am telling you, you will stay under that grace. Even if I tie my hands on your head and sleep off and wake up, you will be surprised that your life will not work. Do you know why? Because it is light dependent. Someone shout light. Shout again, say light. Can you show me the scriptures that support the healing anointing you carry? Can you show me the scriptures that support the ministry of Jesus you want to replicate? Can you show me the ministry that, su that supports your being prosperous? Empty-handedness. Nothing is done in this ministry without scripture. No. The believer's life is bound to scripture. And the operations of God as revealed in scripture. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians you know it and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty you see one day I was in the place of meditation when the Lord began to speak to me that there is such a grace for speed and I said speed who exemplifies that grace for speed? Well, if there's nobody, at least the Holy Ghost is here. And there were two scriptures that fired into my spirit. I remember Esther chapter 2 and verse 8, 8 and 9, speed. That is a dimension of God's favor. Verse 9, please. Give it to us. The Bible says, and the maiden Esther pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her the things for her purification that when men obtain favor part of its expression is speed speed Genesis chapter 27 Jacob Isaac is about to bless his son and Jacob pretends to be Esau and he said how is it that you have returned so quickly he said it's because the Lord had brought it unto me 
So speed is a reality. Speed is a reality. Lord, I receive it. I contend for speed. Do you believe what you are hearing? Let me tell you the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the graces you have received, even from this house, is enough to have distinguished you. But many of us are not careful to attract, manage, multiply, and even activate it through light. I listen to every teaching that comes from here. It doesn't matter that I am the one who God is using. I listen to it because every communication of the Spirit has grace behind it. I listen to improve myself, but I also listen to receive. When it's a time to pray, it is not apostle listening to apostle. No, it is me, a believer, receiving from a man of God. Are we together? Yeah. Yesterday morning, I listened to last month's um, miracle service. All of the prayer and the prophetic words, God is my witness. I was on my knees on start to, from start to finish, shouting amen with all my heart to every prophetic word that came. Look, results are not, don't doubt, if you are not working it, then don't blame God for it not working in your life. You must activate this thing by light. Someone say light. Shout again, say light. Please be a student of scripture. Don't just shout around saying, I know this one, that the Jew laid hands on me. I even sat down in his car. Bishop Oedeko, I met him somewhere. He laid hands on me. When I was coming, Papa Kumuyi laid hands on me. This one laid hands on me. Thank God for that. But men will only turn to idols in your life if you don't support your impartation by, with scripture. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. Everything that is not working in your life, it is because the grace for it is not there or the grace for it is not yet activated. And the number one diagnosis, like you are learning tonight, is light. Along the area of that grace, the grace you desire, if you are broke and finances is not working, don't argue and insult rich people. You are broke, you are broke. In Christ, you are not broke. But physically, financially, institutionally, as your account balances, you are broke there. Come to terms early and say there is a way out. I need to get out of this shame and not keep giving excuses. If there is someone in my same Nigeria and God is exalting that person, Lord, I take responsibility. The blessing is upon me. I need to give evidence to it through my obedience. Go and get the right materials. As you are listening, light will come upon your spirit. And that grace may even be grace that is already there. Suddenly it is activated. And someone says, I've been looking for you for five years. Where are you? God said, I should send you 10 million. And you receive that 10 million and say, it's a lie. It is, then it happens again. Then it happens again. Then you know. That the grace has truly come and you know that the grace is working let me tell you the truth everything that is not yet working in your life can work if you want it can work if you want it can work if you want it can work favor power grace influence results can work if you want it koinonia are we learning mm. can work if you want it can work if you want it. Alakoski ataba. Can work if you want it. I read a scripture about God anointing Jesus with the Spirit without measure, and I said I I I read about Oral Robert and the way he would lay hands on over three to five thousand people one by one, and I said, well, I respect him and I thank God for the way God worked with him. But I don't have the grace to start laying hands on everybody one by one. You see, I may die young doing that. And I'm not ready for that kind of thing. But I now read the story of Moses. That from one place he stood. And the spirit upon him fell on 70 people. Without him touching them one by one. I said, this is a dimension. It's still the ministry of the spirit. It's the one your faith chooses. If, 
if there is an opportunity for ease why not then I also read about Jesus he breathed on the people and said receive ye the Holy Ghost I said that means there is an a more efficient way of communicating spirit things if you have an opportunity to lay hands that's wonderful but that you can speak from one point but that grace was activated it multiplies through light man of God you are called into the healing ministry truly you are called into the prophetic ministry truly have you studied the prophets in the Bible have you studied them don't just say a prophet laid hands on me have you studied the prophets in the Bible they were they were ungodly prophets in the Bible prophets of Baal they were godly prophets which one have you studied how do you know the difference how do you know a familiar spirit is not using you are we together businessman you want the grace that builds have you studied the life of Solomon Solomon built have you studied the life of Joseph Joseph built have you studied the life of Joseph of Arimathea he built there were many people who built in the Bible you have not activated that investment of the spirit that dimension of grace by light I'm praying for you whatever is fighting your access to light whatever is stopping you from having the discipline to sit down and study till light comes into your spirit I command that resistance to leave you now do you know look at me let me tell you the truth there are many believers today who don't even have a good Bible whether electronically or otherwise there are men of God who only have a Bible that was given to them as a gift some of the chapters are torn your respect for light determines the degree of grace that works for you your respect for light your respect for light your respect for light another person will not be submitting himself to scripture laboring with prayer and fastings and you are there watching movies from morning till night till forever and you want to walk at the same level of grace God is not mocked ladies and gentlemen it says do not be deceived God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth are we together you can sow to the spirit and of the spirit reap life everlasting you can sow to the flesh and of the flesh reap corruption by this teaching God is telling someone wake up don't be shouting and saying I have a great destiny you will wake up to make it happen when you wake up then you sit down open up scripture Lord you are sending me as a healing evangelist to the nations so that I don't become a casualty to myself what are the keys to the healing anointing get books healing the sick Charles and Francis Hunter books by TL Osborne books by veterans of healing not talkers of it men and women whose lives embodied authentic healing ministry stay with it camp with it camp with it until light breaks forth and I tell you one day it is your own books that people will be drawing from they will say because of the spectacular investment upon this life it is important that we come and read it is important that we come and study many times people see me and say apostle write books now write books and I tell them wait there is something I need to have to enrich what I want to write I don't want to write nonsense I want to write something that can bless a generation that when we tell you this is a way God has used our life to show you will walk on that way on that path and find life indeed spirit of revelation I saw a lot of organizations suffer suffer in terms of lack of help and because at the infancy of ministry I also suffered it I said no it's not a good thing to be anointed and to be incapacitated financially I told you if you are incapacitated financially you will steal you will tell lies and most likely you will compromise and I didn't want any of the three 
and I said, Lord, there is a way out. I humble myself. I admit that I do not know. Nobody is born with knowledge. It is acquired by passion and pursuit. Transformation is not an inheritance. You don't inherit transformation. Everybody contends for it. And if there is something wrong with your mindset, if it is empty or you are wrong, you have wrong beliefs, you can change. For someone here, let me tell you, stop trying to learn everything in the Bible at once. Even if you're a man of God, take it one by one. You can dedicate the month of July. Since you see that the healing ministry is part of the requisite graces, the signature graces you will need. Why don't you camp with the healing ministry? Use the month of July. Your personal study should be the healing ministry of the Spirit. Get materials. Get videos. Get scriptures. Study. As you invest yourself studying, something will come upon you. Light from heaven. One night you may be the only one studying and God will show you a scripture nobody has seen or not seen the way you are seeing it. And that becomes the anchor scripture for a global healing ministry. Who is God speaking to? Shamalando skiba. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Shapalakaparako sabaretaba. The manifold grace of God attracted, multiplying, establishing your life by your contention for illumination. Contend for it. Contend for it. Contend for light. Contend for light. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Number two. The second way we attract, we multiply, and we activate the manifold graces is by the investment of quality time praying in the Spirit. Listen carefully. The investment of quality time praying in the Spirit is a very potent way of activating graces investment of quality time praying in the spirit not just speaking scripture it's wonderful there is a place for that but quality time praying in tongues praying in the spirit you activate graces you multiply graces hmm, this is true this is true this is true it's not about fanatism there are people who pray are miss but I am telling you within the boundary of understanding, when you learn to invest quality time praying in the spirit, if you are in this place and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of praying in tongues, tonight can be a chance for you. The prayer department is there. There are people in their variety who can minister to you. This is not about being a Pentecostal or charismatic. People have abused this tongue thing. It has become so irritating. People do not even want to delve around that area there is, there is a decent spiritual way of engaging the prayer language of the spirit such that it profits you show me a man who knows how to pray in the spirit and is willing to discipline himself there is no gift of prayer there is a grace for prayer and supplication it only empowers you but the energy comes from you you will pray and pray with energy you will feel it as you pray but because of the joy that is set before you You want to heal nations and you just want to stand up, speak one or two scripture, talk for five minutes and stand and tell people to stand up on a wheelchair? No, sir. All things are finished in Christ. But the price for alignment to receive it and make it work in your life, you will need to submit yourself for prayer. Submit yourself to prayer. Submit yourself to prayer. If you are a man of God here, yeah, let me charge you by the message of God. Obtain grace from God. Wake up in the night when others are snoring for God's sake, for the sake of your destiny. If it is power with God you desire, wake up in the night and pray. Don't pray just to ease guilt. Don't just pray to show people you are prayerful. No. 
pray. Something happens to you as you pray. There is an activation that happens as you pray. You see, what you see today is a cumulative of many years of consistency in prayer. It's not two weeks. It's not one year. It's not 10 years. It's not 15 years. It's a cumulative. Every time you go to pray, see yourself signing a register in the spirit. Joshua Selman, present your majesty. I'm here. Shamaka Paragata. No one is seeing you. Tomorrow again, Joshua Selman, present, obtaining grace from you as my commitment. I want to be such a host of your grace. Joshua Selman, next week, present, sir. Joshua Selman, present, sir. Come on. Your voice is known in the realm of the spirit. As you shout that present, demons are hearing too. As you are shouting present, principalities are hearing. When you stand before men, you are not pretending. One shout, they know it's a familiar voice. They know the sound of that voice. And they know the power that that voice carries. They know the power. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Prayer. Fellowship with the spirit. Turning you to a sign and a wonder. A man of power in the spirit. A man of power in the spirit. Activating manifold graces. Activating manifold graces. Every grace you carry is prayer dependent for its activation. Every grace you carry, I don't care what dimension of grace, it is prayer dependent for its activation. The grace for favor, prayer dependent. The grace for influence, prayer dependent. Signs and wonders, prayer dependent. Wealth and abundance, prayer dependent. Take a minute and pray. Sign that register in the spirit. Building yourselves on your most holy thing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You want God to give you the keys of nations. You must submit yourself to prayer. My sister, submit yourself to prayer. My brother, submit yourself to prayer. Man of God, this laziness spiritually, you won't go far that way. Takes prayer. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Alabaka parakata sabrakatesh. Rakata prakate balakate paros. Stewards of the manifold grace. Businessman pray. Businesswoman pray. Pray. Consistently pray. Consistently travail. Non pretentiously pray. Worshipper pray. Apostle pray. Prophet pray. Banker pray. Politician pray. Legal practitioner pray. Shalakapat. Rabakata prataka pelakata baratos. Prayer with fastings. Pray. Prayer with dedications. Holding on to the altar. Generating power. Multiplying grace. Generating power. Apostolic power. Generating power. Multiplying grace. Activating manifold graces. Manifold graces. Manifold graces. Until you become a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. Until you embody favor. 
until you embody liftings, until you embody restoration. One more minute, you are praying. Ela malaga baratos, sabra kata balaga tas, rakata parakata balaga ta, rapata branda balaga ta braska tas, labrate gabarakatos, ebrakato pariata pas. Activate angels in prayer. Activate the hearts of men in prayer. Command possibilities in prayer. Rewrite your destiny in prayer. Define your possibilities in prayer. Change narratives in prayer. Build stamina in prayer. Rakata branta kapara kotos, la branta para kata prakatos, la grapas kata bala kaparia kata. Tear down the walls of shame and reproach. Tear down the walls of human biases and limitations. Tear down the walls of sentiments and prejudices. Go ahead and pray. Sada balaka parukatas, grave da balaka tas, skada balaka parakatos, soda balentas, ibrati ga baratos, skada branta ga parakos, ela baratos ko prende ga ba, so prende parakos, lega prati ga ba, egra kata parakatos. So the bella da bella da branda ka fara ka tos. So the bella ndas ska branda bella ka ta fara ka tos. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. You see let me tell you the truth. Many people talk about prayer, but I submit to you very few people really understand prayer. Many people, it's a common thing in our world to talk about prayer, especially among ministers of the gospel. Chances are excellent if you don't talk about prayer, it may not be seen as a serious man of God. But very few people really understand the depth the riches, the dimensions, and the possibilities that befall a man who gives himself to prayer. Non-pretentious, not to have a name, not just to have a good testimony before men. You can rewrite narratives in prayer. You can command possibilities in prayer. You can become a prophet in prayer. It doesn't matter what you had. If you take it to the place of prayer, a full stop becomes a comma. The moment you get to the place of prayer, full stop only remains full stop if you agree. No matter what the issue is, you take every full stop to the place of prayer, you can turn every full stop to a comma and add everything the word of God says should be added. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Number three, I'm hurrying up because we're going to do an impartation very quickly. You must receive something tonight. The manifold grace of God. How do you know the grace that is missing in your life? either the grace the dimension of grace that has not been received yet or has not been activated yet because there is a limitation to the command of your results in that area 
the limitations in your command of results is proof that the grace is either not there or it's not been activated listen again how do i know how do i test the presence or the absence of a grace either the grace is not there has not been received you are not even aware that there is such a grace to that dimension or to that degree or you have received it through impartation but you have not been taught how to activate it how to multiply it your command of result in that area remains stunted or completely absent that is how you know a grace is not there apostle nobody seems to favor me i tell you by the integrity of god's word it is because that grace has not come just because you shouted at a miracle service and fell down while shouting the grace may have landed but you did not war with it you didn't activate it how many of you know how a groundnut a groundnut you know groundnut when you it's not you don't pick the seeds like that you have to break that shell and bring it out so if i give you a bag full of groundnuts are we together i can give you that as a gift but you are the one who will go through the labor of deshelling it am i right on that the same thing with corn when you pluck corn from the farm it is not immediately edible you have to peel it then maybe roast it or cook it or whatever you want to do with it or turn it into flour and serve. that one is your own responsibility hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain